Hello, I'm Dr. Sai Satish and I'm an interventional cardiologist working at Apollo Hospital, Chennai. Heart failure is a broad term. Basically what it means is the heart is unable to deal with the demands of the body. Now several conditions can lead to heart failure. Uh, increasing life expectancy that we see nowadays, diabetes, hypertension, obesity and of course the huge burden of coronary artery disease. Like all roads lead to Rome, all these lead to heart failure. Did you know that you have a 1 in 5 lifetime risk of developing heart failure? Not only that, but the single largest cause of hospitalizations in the world is heart failure today. So it's estimated that there are about 26 million heart failure patients on the planet today and they project there's actually about 37.7 million uh, if you take the undiagnosed cases. So extrapolating this data to India, about 4.7 million cases of heart failure are there at any point of time. And these heart failure patients don't have a very good quality of life. A good half of them are hospitalized every six months. This is a huge drain not only on the healthcare, but also on their personal quality of life. They are short of breath, they can't enjoy their day-to-day -day activity, and their life revolves between going to hospitals or seeing their doctor as an outpatient and managing their heart failure with medication. Some of these patients with heart failure have something called mitral regurgitation. Now the mitral valve is the first valve that blood encounters when it enters the heart. It regulates the flow of blood in only one direction. So blood comes to the left upper chamber, flows through the mitral valve and goes to the lower chamber. And when the lower chamber squeezes, the mitral valve closes tight. And this prevents the blood from going back and only goes forward. Now, in a percentage of these patients, this mitral valve is incompetent and blood flows freely back to the upper chamber. Now, two things happen when this, when this happens. One, the top chamber receives a lot more blood than it's used to. And since it's collected to the lungs, the lungs fill up with fluid and people feel like they're choking. The second thing is, since most of the blood is going backward, not enough is going forward. And this deprives the body of good, healthy blood and people feel very tired. This mitral regurgitation actually is a self-propagating disease. So the more the mitral regurgitation, the more the chambers dilate. And as the chambers dilate, the wider the mitral valve gets and the more the leak becomes. So mitral regurgitation begets mitral regurgitation and worsens the condition. It's extremely imperative that we identify patients with this leak and fix it early, thereby stopping this vicious cycle and dramatically improving their quality of life. Now in a country like America, where there are about 380 million people, 350, 380 million people, the incidence of mitral regurgitation is about 4 million cases of mitral regurgitation are diagnosed every year. And it'll be shocking for you to know that only 1.5% of these are actually treated. So it's safe to assume that in a country like India with 1.2, 1.3 billion people, we're at least going to be dealing with that many cases. So this is a significant disease that we're going to see in our day-to-day -day practice and needs to be addressed. And an effective way to break this vicious cycle is to identify patients who are suffering from heart failure, who have severe mitral regurgitation and fix it early. Two things will happen. You are giving a mechanical solution to a mechanical problem. And the second thing is by preventing the blood from going backward, you prevent the heart from dilating, prevent mitral regurgitation from increasing and dramatically improve the symptoms these patients have and control their heart failure. The medical fraternity has long realized the impact of mitral regurgitation and its effect on the quality of life of heart failure patients. And several innovations have come along the way to try and treat this mitral regurgitation. And like I mentioned, you need a mechanical solution to a mechanical problem. So where did we go? We went to the surgeons. The surgeons would repair these mitral valves when they could and make them approximate nicely and prevent the leak from happening. And when they couldn't repair them, they would just replace them with tissue valves or metal valves, thereby making the leak minimal to zero. But what happens to these patients who are too sick for open heart surgery? Because to fix a valve in the heart, they have to stop the heart and go inside and operate on it. And there was a vast majority of patients who could not be operated on. 
So that led to a new group of therapies developing called transcatheter therapies, where you don't open the heart and like angioplasty in a cath lab, you fix these valves. The MitroClip is a new innovation which dramatically improves not only just the quality of life, but also the life expectancy of these patients. And there were several landmark trials. The most important one is something called the COAP trial. And what it did is it took a group of patients. Uh, I'm going to introduce a new word here called functional MR. Basically what it means is the mitral valve leaks because of the heart dilating, because of heart attacks or conditions that like cardiomyopathy that basically affected the heart and made it just weaker, reduced its heart function and got it to just dilate. And when the heart dilates, the mitral ring also dilates and the leaflets are not big enough to touch. And there was a torrential MR. And this leak further made the heart dilate and worsened and patients became very sick. And they usually were too sick to have surgery. So what this mitra clip does is a tiny clip that we introduce through the leg, very much like an angioplasty. And while looking at three-dimensional echocardiography, something called transesophageal. The reason it's transesophageal is it's like an endoscope. It goes straight to the throat and the mitral valve is right next to the, to the pipe that which you use swallow, the esophagus. So you can visualize it clearly. You can see beautiful 3D images. And in three dimension, while you're looking at it, you actually locate the area in the mitral valve that's leaking the most and bring the leaflets together and just clip it and clip away the leak. What happens is instantly the leak reduces and it's like the relief is like waving a magic wand. The next morning the patients are sitting up, they are much better and what the COAP trials showed is not only was the benefit immediate but the patients continued to improve. Their all-cause mortality came down, their quality of life improved. So it's really a remarkable new therapy and the more I start clipping patients, the more I believe how incredible this treatment is.